because you have to learn. This is a skill set we're all learning. You have to learn to apply the wisdom of the ages, the secrets of the universe, the law of assumption to your particular situation to affect your desired outcome. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Today, we are continuing with The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, and this is chapter 24, and chapter 24 is titled Failure. Now, this is probably one of the most important episodes of the Daily Neville series because we have gone into great depths exploring what is the secret of reality creation. We've talked a lot about the power of assumption, the law of assumption. We've talked a lot about the feeling of the wish fulfilled. We've talked about persistence, persisting in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And now we're going to talk about what to do if it doesn't work. What to do if it doesn't work. Neville writes, this book would not be complete without some discussion of failure in the attempted use of the law of assumption. It is entirely possible that you either have had or will have a number of failures in this respect, many of them in really important matters. If, having read this book, having a thorough knowledge of the application and working of the law of assumption, you faithfully apply it in an effort to attain some intense desire and you fail, what is the reason? If to the question, well, did you persist enough? You can answer yes. And still the attainment of your desire was not realized. What is the reason for failure? So what Neville is saying here is that if you have applied this, chances are at some point, either previously or some point in the future, you will have a failure. And you may even be able to answer, did you persist? You may be able to say yes. And there still may be a situation in which your desire is not coming to fruition. And so Neville is taking the opportunity in this chapter to explain to us what this means and to relate it to a new idea that he's introducing to us in this series. And that is the idea of naturalness. Let's listen to what he has to say here. The answer to this is the most important factor in the successful use of the law of assumption. The most important factor. And Neville writes, and it's italicized in this edition. The time it takes your assumption to become fact, your desire to be fulfilled, is directly proportionate to the naturalness of your feeling of already being what you want to be, of already having what you desire. I'm going to read that one more time. The time it takes for your assumption to become fact, your desire to be fulfilled, is directly proportionate to the naturalness of the feeling of already being what you want to be, of already having what you desire. Neville writes, the fact that it does not feel natural to you to be what you imagine yourself to be is the secret of your failure. So what he is saying is you have a desire, you want to become something, and so you begin to kind of bring that feeling in. You get to find that feeling of the wish fulfilled, and you start to sustain it, you start to persist in it. But the problem is, is it doesn't feel natural, not natural to the extent required to make it a fact, and he's gonna explain more here. Neville writes, regardless of your desire, regardless of how faithfully and intelligently you follow the law, if you do not feel natural about what you want to be, you will not be it. You have to feel natural about you want to, what you want to be in order to be it. If it does not feel natural to you to get a better job, you will not get a better job. The whole principle is vividly expressed by the Bible phrase, you die in your sins. You do not transcend from your present level to the state desired. You die in your sins. Now, we understand that sin means to miss the mark, meaning you have an objective and you fail to reach it. Or 
you fail to transcend your present level and become the state desired. And the reason for this is because it doesn't feel natural to you. It feels like too much of a stretch. It's like a vibrational mismatch, right? It's trying to hop a frequency without being able to actually match the frequency, if that makes sense. So Neville's going to teach us here, how can this feeling of naturalness be achieved? How can this feeling of naturalness be achieved? The secret lies in one word, imagination. For example, this is a very simple illustration. Assume that you are securely chained to a large, heavy iron bench. You could not possibly run. In fact, you could not even walk. In these circumstances, it would not be natural for you to run. You could not even feel that it was natural for you to run because you're chained to a heavy iron bench. But you could easily imagine yourself running. In that instance, while your consciousness is filled with your imagined running, you have forgotten that you are bound to the bench. In imagination, your running was completely natural. The essential feeling of naturalness can be achieved by persistently filling your consciousness with imagination. Imagining yourself being what you want to be or having what you desire. So what Neville is saying is that the feeling of naturalness is essential. And the way that you obtain the feeling of naturalness is by becoming used to the feeling of being what you desire to be by filling your imagination with the scenes associated with that state. Now, for me personally, one of the things that I do for this, when I am assuming a new state and I'm realizing that there's some aspect of my being that I'm leaving behind and I'm stepping in or transcending my previous state of awareness and I'm moving into a new state of awareness, one of the things that I do is I go for a walk. I go for a walk. I go for a walk around my neighborhood and I practice moving my body while filling my mind with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And in my mind, that's a, a secret. It's a secret to sustain distumption is to learn to literally walk and move in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Now, it doesn't have to just be walking. You could ride a bike. You could do a yoga practice. You could do something that has to do with movement. For me, I think there's magic in marrying this idea of movement with the imaginal act, the imaginal feeling of the wish fulfilled. It adds to the naturalness. I can sit here and I can think of things, and that's one thing, right? If I'm sitting there and just thinking of it. But if I'm moving my body as, right? If I'm moving my body as and from the desired state, in my mind, it speeds up the arrival of the feeling of naturalness. Neville writes, progress can spring only from your imagination, from your desire to transcend your present level. What you truly and literally must feel is that with your imagination, all things are possible. What you truly and literally must feel is that with your imagination, all things are possible. This is a condition for transcending your present state of awareness and becoming something further, growing, achieving, becoming a new state of awareness. In order to do so, you must feel that in your imagination, all things are possible. It's a prerequisite. You must realize that changes are not caused by caprice, but by a change of consciousness. Now, I had never really heard the word caprice used in a sentence like this before, so I took the liberty of looking it up. And according to Merriam-Webster, the word caprice is a noun for a sudden, impulsive, and seemingly unmotivated notion or action, a sudden or unusually or sudden or unpredictable condition change or series of changes. So what he's saying is it's not going to be a random act that suddenly you change, that suddenly uh, something in your life changes. It's not going to be some random, seemingly sudden or impulsive change. No, it's going to come out of, be birthed out of a change of consciousness. Not a random act, a persistent change of consciousness. You may fail to achieve or sustain the particular state of conscious necessary to produce the effect you desire. But once you know 
that consciousness is the only reality and is the sole creator of your particular world and have burned this truth into your whole being, then you know that success or failure is entirely in your own hands. What a statement. What a powerful, powerful statement. Now, we've talked about this. We've talked about how consciousness is the only only reality is a model of reality. And not everyone on planet Earth in today has adopted this model of reality saying that literally the universe is made of consciousness. And those who haven't adopted this model of reality will find a statement like this very difficult to accept. But for those of us that are students of consciousness, students of imagination, students of Neville Goddard, students of metaphysics, we understand that consciousness is the only reality. And out of that paradigm, we have access to a whole new world of possibilities mediated through our imagination. I'm going to read this sentence again. Once you know that consciousness is the only reality and is the sole creator of your particular world and have burned this truth into your whole being, then you know that success or failure is entirely in your own hands. Whether or not you are disciplined enough to sustain the required state of consciousness in specific instances has no bearing on the truth of the law itself, that an assumption, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Now, what Neville is saying here is he's saying whether you are able to affect the law into your preferred outcome or not has no bearing on the truth of the law itself. It's simply a matter of whether you are disciplined enough to remain faithful to the feeling of the wish fulfilled, to persist in it, and to adopt the feeling of naturalness. The saw is going to work, saw or drill power tool. It's going to work whether you know how to use it or not, right? You can't argue that it's the drill's fault or the power tool's fault or the saw's fault. It's your fault. You're the operator of the tool, right? So it's not consciousness's fault. It's your fault if it doesn't work because you have to learn. This is a skill set we're all learning. You have to learn to apply the wisdom of the ages, the secrets of the universe, the law of assumption to your particular situation to affect your desired outcome. The certainty of the truth of this law, Neville writes, must remain despite great disappointment and tragedy. Even when you see the light of life go out and all the world go on as though it were still day. Now that last little part is a quote there. I think he's quoting someone, a a famous author as usual. And basically it's a way of evoking an emotional feeling. So even when it seems that all hope is lost, even when it seems like a tragedy has occurred and you did everything in your imagination to try to affect it and make it go one way, and it seems to quite brazenly, boldly, and without any regard for your personal feelings, swing the other way, that does not mean that the law itself does not work. It simply means that there's more to learn. There's more to do. There's more to become. Neville writes, you must not believe that because your assumption failed to materialize, The truth that assumptions do materialize is a lie. I'm going to read that again. You must not believe that because your assumption failed to materialize, the truth that assumptions do materialize is a lie. If your assumptions are not fulfilled, it is because of some error or weakness in your consciousness. However, these errors and weaknesses can be overcome. Now, from time to time, I get comments on my videos saying, I tried this and it didn't work for me. And I try to be as loving as possible in these situations in my responses to those of you that leave comments like this. But Neville isn't quite as gentle, perhaps, as what I have been in some of my responses to these comments. Neville says, well, if it's not fulfilled, it's because of an error or weakness in your consciousness. So there you go. There's the answer. If you tried it and it didn't work, it's because there's an error or weakness in your consciousness. Now, that may sound a little harsh, but here's the good news. Such error 
or a weakness in your consciousness can be overcome. Like I said, there's just simply more to learn. There's more to do, meaning more to assume in order to become the person that you desire to be. And in this case, the creator that you desire to be operating the law of assumption. These errors and weaknesses can be overcome. Therefore, press on to the attainment of ever higher levels by feeling that you already are the person you want to be. And remember that the time it takes your assumption to become reality is proportionate to the naturalness of being it. And Neville closes this chapter with a quote from Emerson. And the quote is, man surrounds himself with the true image of himself. Every spirit builds itself a house, and beyond its house, a world, and beyond its world, a heaven. Know then that the world exists for you. For you, the phenomenon is perfect. What we are, that only can we see. All that Adam had, all that Caesar could, you have and can do. Adam called his house heaven and earth. Caesar called his house Rome. You perhaps calls yours a cobbler's trade, a hundred acres of land, or a scholar's garret. Yet, line for line and point for point, your dominion is as great as theirs, though without fine name. Build, therefore, your own world. As fast as you conform your life to the pure idea in your mind, that will unfold its great proportion. Now, I want to talk for a moment here about how to achieve the naturalness of an assumption. Neville talks a little bit about it. He says that it's imperative. He says it's very, very important. And you must get used to it by filling your imagination with the images. And we're going to take this one step farther. And I'm going to tell you that it's about mental diets. It's about literally immersing yourself in the thoughts, the feelings, the images, the language of your desire. Meaning that if there's Let's say you desire to be an actor. You need to fully immerse yourself in the world of acting. You need, to, you need to study the great films. You need to study the great screenplays. You need to literally get in the state of being just like a great actor would be. Whatever that great actor would be doing, if you desire to be a great actor, you are demanded, according to this law of consciousness, this law of becoming the naturalness, of that which you desire to be, you must imitate, you must become that, you must be that and act as that. So in your imagination, you can imagine, you know, that your name is on the marquee and screen and lights and so forth and so forth. But really, if you're going to assume the naturalness of the feeling, you need to fully immerse yourself in a diet associated with your desire. Now, we gave the example of an actor. Another very common one that comes to mind is those of you that desire to be wealthy. I believe all human beings desire very deeply to be wealthy. So the question is, well, you can, do, you can imagine having wealth. You can imagine having great wealth. And as a wealthy person, go ahead and start planning how to manage your wealth. Go ahead and start really submerging yourself in the world of wealth. Tour nice neighborhoods where you want to live. Go to those nice gyms. Go to those nice parts of town, go to those high-end clothing stores, go to high-end shopping centers, visit high-end websites, go to designer galleries, really immerse yourself in the feeling of being that which you desire to be so that it takes on this very normal, natural feeling. And that normal, natural feeling is really what you're looking for because it is indication that you are now thinking from rather than thinking of. You're thinking as you're being rather than wanting to have or seeking or trying to get. And that's a key little switch in mentality that unlocks the secret of this law of assumption. In the comments below, what is your secret for obtaining the naturalness of a desire? Share with me. I'm excited to read them. Share with the other people who will read your comments. Drop a thumbs up button on this video to help others find this teaching about failure and how to avoid it, and subscribe to this channel so that you get Daily Neville tomorrow. 
Imagine wisely, my friends, and I will see you in the next.